Hello, everybody. The three amigos are back. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? I am Nick Murphy. I'm Mike. And I'm Steph. Yeah, you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One day she's like, I'm Barb. And we're like, what? You lied to us this whole time. She back? Barb's she here. <gasps> Barb's she here. Yay. Oh, wow. My twin is here. God, I hate when she does that. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Uh, this is going to be another top 10 verse 10 where we collectively make a top 10 list in a certain mm-hmm. category today is going to be family games and then yes. we compare that to board game geeks top 10 on board game geek there's a whole bunch of different categories mechanics all this different stuff and you can Groups. look at the top ranked games in each of those so we pick one find the top ranked games and then make our list and then we fight to the See. death and by that it means we, <laughs> we generally agree um we're gonna bludgeon you with a copy of ti4 <laughs> one hit Dead. That's it. It's all six. This is what my family plays. <laughs> this is what my family plays. I will it's kill huge, you. Babe. I am intimidated by your family for sure. My sushi girl <laughs> will kill you. Um, but nonetheless, so this is gonna be family game. So this is not necessarily like like Steph. What do you categorize a family game? Because like, it's not like a gateway game. Not necessarily. But not necessarily. It can be. Um, right. When I think family game, I actually think, okay, my family's getting together. It's the holidays. It's whatever. We're playing like typical like hearts and card games and stuff like that. But these are games that I can introduce to them that they will take in and enjoy playing. And so when I think family games, I I have these specific games that I'm like, we're going to get these to the table and they're going to enjoy them. I yeah. like that. I think that's a good marker. It's about what's going to get played. Yeah. So that's kind of how we've curated our list. And then we're going to compare that against what Board Game Geek has under their family as a, a game type. Yes, exactly. Family games. So, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Forking Geeks, number 10. I will say for this top 10, this is probably the one we all agree with like the most. In terms yeah. of like, I like all the list. games on BGG's list. Board Game Geek's got a good list. Because they're starting off with a banger at 96 overall on BGG, and that is Stone Age. Stone yes. Age is a great game. Yeah, I always think of it as like a great um, way to introduce worker placement. Uh-huh. Um, it's kind of on the lighter side for a worker placement game and stuff. So I totally see how if you're a family, you might start with something like a Stone Age. And they even have, I think, my first Stone they Age, do. which is an easier version to get families going. So it makes sense that it'd be on this list. What do you think, Steph, of Stone Age in general? So, you know what? It's funny. I just learned this last month. (laughs) Oh, is that right? (laughs) So I only just learned it, and um, I liked it. Uh, But, you know, having played every other game at this point, it's like, it was a little underwhelming. However, I did enjoy the mechanic of the dice rolling and trying to hopefully get what you want to roll that was, you know, I always rolled poorly, so it's just... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's, that a, that's the tricky thing with that one. So Stone Age, you roll these dice out. Uh, you can basically put multiple workers to an action space to collect resources. There's wood, there's uh, like brick, gold, things of kind of a more higher rarity. Yeah. And so what you do is the more workers you put to any one of those spaces, you get to roll more dice, yeah. which is good because it's harder to collect gold than it is to collect wood. So you need to roll higher or roll a, a greater cumulative number uh, to get more gold. So you yeah. need to put more workers there. So but the thing I like about it is there's ways to mitigate that within the game. And I feel like it's super thematic because it is harder to get gold than it is to pick up a stick on the ground. Yes. So it makes sense uh, within the game, uh, which is really, uh, really interesting. Yeah. It kind of creates that the uh, early life and yeah. early civilization. Yeah, it's it's really fun and thematic. Uh, I like it a lot. That's a that's a great first pick, BGG. Nice. <laughs> Already in the top one hundred. Oh, I know, that's the thing. I, I like, don't man. think uh, there's one of ours that is in the top hundred. So. Yeah, our list is we got different uh, tastes. I guess is different than this. They're good and they're and yeah, I like our list. <laughs> and I like our list. But uh, so that's your number ten, Stone Age. Um, good choice. Let's go ahead and get into our number ten. Our number 10 is Herbaceous, coming in at 939 overall in the BGG rank scale. Criminally low. It is. I mean, it is pretty cool. And the art is fantastic. Oh, that Beth Sobel art. I know. This so one, good. This one's super good because of its simplicity and stuff. So this was kind of one of the ones that I pushed for on the list because... Um, I play this game with so many non-gamers. Yeah. Like, it's one that I usually bring. If I'm in a show or something, I'll bring and we can play backstage pretty mm-hmm. quick. Uh, and so that's kind of what made me think about it. It's like people really like it because of that wonderful art. It's this cool kind of set collection, a little bit of push your luck. Um, that just, like, kind of made I was 
one I think maybe you threw out there's like, don't you play your bases a lot? I was like, oh yeah, like it's yeah, kind well, of a perfect. I specifically I introduced our our brother and sister, our other brother and sister, um, to her bases uh, over the holidays last year, and they really liked it. We played it a ton. Yeah. And so I literally was the first thing because I was like, what games do I play with my family? Like, what games can I bring out with our family? And like, so and we tend to play games with our brother and sister when we're home, and so like. This was one of the ones that was a big hit. So I was like, oh, Herbaceous has got to be on there because it's like more and more and more. I'm like bringing out with more and more people because it's just such a cool little theme of like collecting herbs and, and you know, potting them in different little potting plants and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. it's just it's just awesome. Do you like Herbaceous, Steph? Oh, I, I enjoyed it the one time I got to play it. But um, yeah, I can definitely heavy. see that being a hit with the family just because it's easy set collection and it's 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 nice. Yeah, yeah. it goes down smooth, right? It's just kind of built yeah. to, like the mechanics are easy. It's like you're going to draw two cards. One has to go to one location, one has to go to the other. You choose one to pot and you're out. Like, donezo. I appreciate how... <laughs> a bit of push your luck to it. Yeah. You're yeah. like, oh, do I want to wait? Ugh, should I grab okay. a saffron now or should I wait one more round? <laughs> yeah. And of course someone else grabs it and you're like, now I'm stuck with Terracon like an idiot. It, you yeah. know and just like it's great it makes yeah, you it's cry great. it's awesome the wild world of <laughs> herb collecting yeah yes and that's why it's good that's why it's our number 10 folks uh with that let's go ahead and jump into board game geeks number nine whoa All right, Board Game Geeks number nine is a classic. It's one of the most play. It's one of our most played games. It was the game that got us into the hobby, and that is ranked 86 overall, and that is Pandemic. Yeah. In terms of family games, gateway games, it's one of the best. It's co-op. It's got a great theme. You're all yeah. working together. It's just, it's Pandemic. There's now a billion versions of it. It's turned into like Carcassonne. I feel like where now there's like Carcassonne in the Amazonas and Carcassonne in the South Seas. <laughs> it's like Pandemic. Now it's like a Pandemic North America, and I'm just like. Okay, you know, on, on, man. Yeah, it's all this stuff. So um, we love Pandemic. I mean, there's not much to say. It's it's we it's, absolutely adore. It's it. The reason we're here in this. Hobby. Steph, are you are you a Pandemic fan? And if so, which one's your favorite? What's your favorite Pandemic? <laughs> all right, so no, not so much. <laughs> um, so I guess I had a really bad experience when I first got into the hobby, and I just hated it after that. And I haven't played the Legacy. However, just. Yesterday, I learned Iberia. Just I'm like, I'll give it another shot. <laughs> the other day, like two days ago, Sunday, wow. this weekend, I learned Iberia. So um, I actually really enjoyed it. It had like you place railroads down and yeah. there's like little water droplets. So that helps you as the game goes on. I didn't feel like we were ever truly devastated. So we ended up winning. So we had a good combination wow. of what's happening. Um, and so it was really good. I, I enjoyed it. And maybe I'll give Legacy a chance now. <laughs> All right, there you I go. Like that. I, I had yeah, to I shut mean, the it, door on Pandemic. However, maybe yeah, I'll open it up again. That's fine. <laughs> that's you're good. just creaking it open. You're taking a look. Now, I think you did a good job by going with Pandemic Iberia. That's probably That has favorite. become my favorite yeah. Pandemic now. Because it's I'm still Pandemic probably in the olden times. <laughs> yeah. But Pandemic Iberia is really good. I like it a lot. It's yeah. super fun. It's just like, it's cool and thematic. And like, I like the railway system. It's just, it's different enough to be different. And it's, it's, I really it's like in that one. Cause it's in, it's, you know, from in the past, it's like, there's no curing disease. Yeah. They're just like, you, you can just sort of get better at treating it. Research. Yeah. It's like someday we'll cure this. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's awesome. pretty well. thematic. The, the whole game cool. is just beautiful also. So that yes. really yeah, helped really me. Like I mean, it's, I, I got to be the nurse. So that and the nurse was really cool because she just, plops down like a bullseye and then all the surrounding cities yeah. just is protected <laughs> yeah. yeah it was awesome which so is, which is accurate man that's awesome it's awesome uh yeah. cool well uh pandemic is board game geeks number nine ranked what is it over 86 over 86 Very indeed nice. yeah let's go and jump an hour number nine Our number nine is 1457 overall and it's called Riff Raff. now I'm a big fan of dexterity games, and this is by far my favorite. <laughs> Have you guys played this one, or do you like dexterity games in general? Or Love dexterity. Love dexterity, yeah. haven't played it, so I want to find out more, because the yeah. fact is that dexterity with the name Riff Raff, I have high hopes. It's yes. so amazing, because it is a boat, and you are literally placing these little like wooden things like treasure chest or a sailor or i've added a whole bunch of extra stuff because it just makes it more fun like i have little like squids that you that (laughs) that are for like atlantis or you know the atlantis game with the sharks and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. little there's a a promo with these uh squids so i put those in there it's all thematic it's so good and so you're playing these cards if i play the number eight i'm gonna have to play on the eight part on the boat 
And so mm. the boats are going like this and it's shaking and they're like, oh my God, if it falls, all the stuff comes to me and you just don't want it. Obviously you don't want the pieces. You want to get rid of your pieces. So oh, yes, you, you I... have to, but you play in number order. So the highest person plays first. So you want to place first before somebody else screws you over. And then, and it's just all these different things. And I like so, that. Ooh, I like having the cards, fun. um, determining slots and stuff so it can add like different and that, that once routine. you're done with cards then the game is over so whoever has the fewest pieces left over so you're gonna go through all your cards so you have to play it eventually so when are you going to play it oh, that's interesting. Right. So there's a little bit of strategery there yeah a little yeah bit. like that. i have seen this and stuff with the boat and it is really cool that is very cool i've never heard of this, this yeah is awesome. i like because there's not that many balanced games and i brought this out with my family and my grandfather played and he's like, ah! <laughs> they get so intense and it's so much yeah, fun. Yeah, that's like the perfect... I mean, dexterity in general is a pretty easy sell. It's like, hey, we're playing Rhino here. We're stacking cards. You know, it's like yeah. it's an easier yeah. sell. And then it's like, that's that's brilliant. I love that. That's yeah, great. Give you the Indiana Jones moment where you're just like hovering right above yeah, something just... like, oh, God. Don't want to bow, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's oh, super that's great. cool. That's great. I love that. So, so yeah, Riff perfect. Raff is my favorite dexterity game. It was in my top 10 for a while, but, you know, now it's in my top 20 or something. So it's, it's there. So but it's, it's garbage. It's high it's quality. It's so good. It's high no, quality. it's just there's so many great games. That's the issue, that. right? I know. It's I love it. Still a ten out of ten. I love, love, love. Oh, that's awesome. Boom. Perfect. Riff Raff number nine for us. Let's go yeah. ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number eight. Let's do it. All right, just moving up slightly. Uh, our BG's number eight rather is eighty four overall, and mm. that is the Quacks of. Gwendolenburg. Mix. I think it's safe to say we all love this game. It's so good. Yeah. We've talked about we've talked this. About it. uh, it's nice because on this list, on our list, and on the BG family list, there's a lot of games we actually haven't talked about. This is one of the ones we've talked about a fair amount because it's, here's really fun. it's just this is one of those games that just works because people love pushing their luck, especially like a lot of new gamers kind of like pushing their luck because it's something they can understand, you know, like no whammies, no whammies, no whammies, stop kind of thing, yeah. you know. And this, you're just pulling stuff out of the bag. It's always exciting because you're always like, oh, don't be that three white. Please don't be of that three white. it's going to be that one. Now and of course it, it in the is. Universe. You're like feeling around your bag like, okay, I have a one in 86 chance of grabbing that three white. You're like doing the math in your head. And of course you grab it every time. Every time. It's so good. I, I do. I mean, everybody else gets right? lucky, but oh. I always bust. I always always pull the wrong one <laughs> there's always that moment in like round seven where you just pull the worst round possible and you're like statistically you're all game <laughs> how is this even possible that i pulled all these whites yeah. out like it's just amazing oh it's so good yeah it's fun because you can bust and but it doesn't ruin your time no like you still have fun it's not the end of the world to bust the game doesn't not punish you that much maybe late game you'd, you'd really rather not but it's like eh, whatever yeah. if you do it early in the game it's fine uh, and I just love the variability with the powers. Yes, the variability um, is... You can choose like what the different colored chips do. Uh, they, they might do slightly different things. They might work different with um, other colored chips in your yeah. bag, depending on the game. So you can have some variability there. That might change the types of things you want and to And then buy. if you add Herb Witches, you get even more abilities. Like, Stephanie, yeah. you play with Herb Witches? Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, it's I so good. I love those witches so much. It's so <laughs> good. And that's the thing. is like, if you add Herb Witches in the base game, the amount of like different combinations of all the different... Because now there's six powers for each chip. Yeah. And you have like three or four powers for each Herb Witch. And it's just like, the variability is just like through the roof. It's just... It's great. If you haven't played Quacks, give it a shot. It's great. And get the Geek Up Dude, Bits because it, it legitimately go. makes the game better with the Geek Up so Bits. So much better. <laughs> like, gotta do <laughs> it. That click clacking. Click, click, it's click, just the feel like, is so good. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Now I want to go play. I know. <laughs> I know, right? End of list. We're going to go play. Done. Yeah. That is your number eight, 84 BG. Great job. It's a great family game. You're great people, except for you. You know who you are. Mm. Um, But nonetheless, that is your number eight. Let's go ahead and get into our number eight. Our number eight at 544 is Cacao. Cacao! Our numbers are, we're cacao. grazing, we're climbing the list, we're in the 500s. We're getting there, we'll probably drop yeah. back down again. Yeah. Cacao, man, praise be, Phil Walker Harding. Praise be. Uh, we, we were joking about, like, Phil Walker Harding is, like, built to make these types of games. Yeah. Like, family, weight, fun, kind of little puzzly games and stuff. That's what, that's what that dude does. That's what PHW does. Does. Uh, <laughs> so PWH. <laughs> Yeah, one of those combos. So Cacao is a game, a little tile placement game uh, where you are, um, you, you have these, uh, a kind of a stack of 
tiles that will have workers around mm -hmm. various edges. There might be one where there's one worker around all four edges. There might be one where there's two workers around an edge, one worker around two other edges and a blank side. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to put your worker tiles next to jungle tiles to activate the jungle tiles yeah. and get Coco, sell Coco, uh, move up a river, and surround uh, kind of temples for end game scoring. So the cool thing is it kind of fills out a board in a checkerboard uh pattern where there there will never be worker tiles right next to each other nor will there be jungle tiles right next to each other and so it's all about kind of strategically placing a jungle tile um that might be next to an existing worker tile that will activate a some of your workers that you placed a while back and yeah. you can deny your opponent anything because it's on one of their blank sides yeah because like if you that. ever have it where there's a worker tile and another one right here where there's then two sides covering a blank space, then yeah, you have to in. fill it in with a jungle tile. So the thing is, you could put this this tile down here that has a worker facing this way. You could have put it down there in the beginning of the game, but yeah. that spot never got yeah, filled in. But then later, there. I come and put one here, this fills in, and then that worker activates. And yeah. so it's this really interesting thing of like putting stuff down, activating now, and then trying to fill in areas to help you out mm -hmm. while also hoping that some of your other stuff activates later. It's... Real weird, and it works really well, though. Yeah, it's super simple. Uh, what do you think of Cacao, Steph? Have you played? Oh, yeah, I've played uh, many years ago, and I really enjoyed it. Just It's one of those that kind of, like, just doesn't come out very frequently, so I haven't had many opportunities to try it. Yeah. Um, yeah but I remember kinda, really liking it, so. Yeah, yeah. It, we kind of evangelize this one. We're always like, no, we're going to bring this one out, because this yeah. is, because Phil Walker Hardy has, like, Sushi Go, and, like, Baron Park, these really huge banger of, like, uh, very family games. games and so yeah. cacao we're like no we're gonna pull cacao because this is one of his lesser known ones you know yeah but it is fun when we do get it played and people tend to enjoy it yeah. um and so like i've played this one with kids and stuff and they like it and they can kind of pick up the whole kind of making this board grow is like a cool thing yeah to you know to explore so um yeah that's why we were like you know sushi goes gonna get plenty of love as it should and all these other games so we're like let's give cacao we pull love. cacao often yeah. yeah it's super fun every time i play it i'm always like man i really like that game yeah man, it's a good game, yeah. you know. It's light and stuff, but it's like I don't mind. I, I sometimes just want a light little kind of fun little puzzle. Yeah. Something simple. That's our number eight. Boom. Let's get into BGGs. Number seven. <laughs> Borgen Geek, your number seven is number 73 overall, and that is Patchwork. What Man, a solid game. Did Patchwork just blow the roof off just, us? I feel like, you know, right? Just... I, 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 and it should. It's simple, but the fact that they're like, we're going to have basically two forms of currency in this game. There's buttons and there's time. It's like yeah. so cool. Yeah. It's, it's really a real cool. good game. I haven't played it in a while, but it's a real good game. It's a really good it's game. It's a polyomino yeah. tile game where you're making a quilt. Talk about just a theme that the you're like, is this going to do themes. things? But yeah. it works. You're like, it's it kind of fun to build your little, you know, have your little patches and make it look neat. I just, yeah, it's yeah. just great. Yeah. Steph, you you play this one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I play a lot of two player games. Um, and it's Uva Rosenberg, so it can't go wrong, right? Um, but I, I always make the the huge error of going for those single one by one tiles, and then I make a point to always get them, and then I never fill in anywhere close to <laughs> filling in my board because I've just spent too much time for it's bigger brutal. tiles. These little leather so, scraps, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I always like the challenge, though. I mean, it's it's really a great great two player 15 minute game very good yeah yeah it's just about filling out as much of your quilt as possible um you can get certain patches uh for your quilt while buttons on them which create a kind of button economy there's yeah. certain times where you get income which you need to have to spend uh to be able to buy more patches and stuff so it's like just really simple in that you know it's kind of a bit of money management time management there's this cool thing of if nick buys a patch that moves your pawn like five spaces forward now it's my turn since my pawn is behind his and if i buy a patch that only moves me three spaces i'm still behind him i get to go again yeah and like that right there is really cool well, that game is really tactical and kind of cutthroat that way where you're just like trying to steal each other's patches mm -hmm. and trying to like Again, it's just it's a game that it's a lot more than you think it's gonna be yeah. when you first pull it out. But, but patchwork so, is great. Yeah, but still quick and uh it's about putting the puzzle together. So it's yeah. just kind of like fun to work on. It's, there's not a ton of different rules or anything, it's just what patches you get and put them where. Yeah. Uh so that is patchwork at number seventy three mm -hmm. overall. That makes it Board Game Geeks number eight. Seven. Seven. 
Is it? Yep. Wow, we're cooking. Wow, we're doing good. Number seven. <laughs> uh, with that, let's go ahead and jump into our number seven. Our number seven is 11,534. Just a classic pick. And that's really far down the list. So if you haven't heard about it, you should check out Kenny G keeping it sexy. Did you see that? So sexy. Look, signed by the man himself on my cover. That's what's (laughs) up. The man. How cool. Legend. (laughs) Legend. The 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 legend, Kenny G. I mean, I had to pick this game because how could I not? Right? Look at that it's hair. The Look greatest hair. game ever made. You're going to tell Kenny G to yeah. his face you're not going to play his game? You're yeah. Tell him that. The thing yeah. I like about this, we made a good, uh, uh, Seth made a good point about this, saying it's about stuff that you can play with your family. Yeah. Keeping it sexy is designed exactly for holidays, little uh, gifts and things for people. Yeah. It's funny. There's actually a game there. You're helping Kenny G out. It's cooperative. Like, this is the perfect. Family it's the type perfect game. game, and it's at Target in their game section yeah. for a reason. Like, I think it's a great pick, but we did. I'm, I'm now just patting ourselves on the back. We did. All the publishers can go. Yeah, good job. Yeah. I mean, so it's like it's it's like it was way better than I would ever anticipate. I mean, right? it's a challenging cooperative game to make sure Kenny G doesn't have a bad day. God, what a Isn't sentence. It, what a, what that a is noble, a sentence right there. What a noble mission. Just, just help Kenny G get through his day. Make sure he doesn't get him have a his hair, get or him his assistant. The oil, so his hair always looks wet, you yeah, know? It has a nice like, bounce to it. Oh, so good. Well, I mean, it's based off of true facts, which I have right here. Please, so hit us with some all, true All of these facts. things happened. So he loves golfing and stuff like that. So, for example, he... He was introduced to golf at age 10. Kenny G has been teamed up with golf greats Tiger Woods and Phil McNicholson. How cool is that? That's did awesome. you know that? No. I, I did not know that. No one knows that. <laughs> we have that rule book. In Kenny G that. started playing the saxophone at age 10 after being inspired by a performance on the Ed Sullivan Show. Interesting. He has his own line of saxophones, if you didn't know. Yeah. He's those specialty saxes that are like... I didn't know. I didn't know it was a saxophone until I got this game. That's a real fact. I was like, because it doesn't look like one. It's a different thing. He has his own. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, One more is one of his favorite hair products was discontinued. Kenny G stocked up on several bottles so he would not run out for a while. Boom. Nice. Got it. That's a whole piece of that brand. He's he's a man known for his hair. As a man known for his hair. I get it. All right. I got to get the right product. I use something called Keep My Curl. And if Keep My Curl went out of business, you better believe I'd stock up beforehand. How am I supposed to keep my curl without it? (laughs) It's important stuff, y'all. So all these things are, and, 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 and Kenny G has a good humor about it. Like he's posted about it on like Instagram and all these different places. So he's like, he's a cool guy, right? Yeah. 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 He <laughs> apparently was instantly like, yeah, this is a great idea. This is hilarious. And I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. I love it that happens. Yeah. I think that's what's, what's really fun is like when you get people who get it, they're, they, and the cool thing is because now you have something that's really going to help promote the hobby. It really will yeah. because you're going to get people who are going to get it because it's funny. Yes. That's a funny name. They're going to get it and people might play it and be like, oh, that was actually really cool. Yeah. And they might go back to Target and be like, what else is here? And that might be Sagrada or yeah. Pandemic yeah. or things that are, you know, on these lists. Uh, so I'm like, yo, this is going to help create board gamers. I'm all in on keeping it sexy for sure. Yeah. I got no problems with that. Pick. In. Yeah. Good pick we made. <laughs> it's a great game. It's a great game. It's Excellent. a perfect game. Excellent. It's the best game ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's why it's our number seven because <laughs> it's right. the best game ever made uh with yeah. that we'll go ahead and jump into board game geeks number six all right board game geek number six is a classic we actually just cult finally played new. this and it is so cold to the new board game we geek. kept being like is it that good it is and that Brand is number new. 70 overall and that is crocodile so crocodile is a great game oh it, it has nice. no right being as fun as it is I know. Do you like that? So, Seth, you were talking about dexterity games. Like, oh, this gosh, is like yes. the, the grand, the grand, like your family would get into some crocodile tournaments, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. I, I mean, I, I, I have a really nice board. I would be terrified Jealous. to have my family play on my of nice course. board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's definitely a fantastic game. So you play game. on a pizza box. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. there's tons of other dexterity crocodile type games as well. I mean, you don't have to play crocodile, but crocodile is definitely the best of its genre for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. just so simple. It's just a game where you have a big round board. It's a big, it's a big board, big round board. Yeah. And two sides, you can play four players, but it's mostly two players. And you each have like different colored discs and you're just flicking, trying to get 
into the center. And like, if I flick it into the center, if there's no one else on the board, then you can just flick it wherever you want. But then once your opponent's on the board, your thing that you flick has to touch one you of touch their- one of your opponent's discs. One of their, you have to touch their disc. So you're trying to like touch their disc to one, knock them out of the center. Cause it's kind of shuffleboard rules where the closer you are to the center, the yep. more points you're going to get. But then you're also maybe just trying to like, just touch them and then knock your person in. It's just, it becomes it's so, so much fun. <laughs> so tactical, so quick, but it's so simple. It's just, you're, you're either, there's nothing, no other color on the board. So you're trying to go for the center ring yeah. or you're trying to touch the thing and get to the center. Oh, and so, so there's, good. that's all it is, but it's so good. I'm so jealous. You have a board stuff. I want one. I know. Oh, so yeah, it's a bad. nice board. I want a really nice board. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to save up for this. I just, I want to get into, it. we played it like a month or two ago and I knew we, I knew we were going to like it and I played it and I was just like, that was a stronger feeling than I was ready for. <laughs> now here I am. Yeah, great game. I mean, oh. great game. It's just, it's a flicking game. Like, it's perfect for families. It's, great it's choice. Perfection it within its simplicity. Yeah. Great choice, BGG. That is uh, your number six. Number 70 overall. Mm. Broken all. Good job. Let's go ahead and get into our number six. Our number six at 2867 is Fireball Island. Our man, the the picks we have in terms of the overall ranking are all over the place. This might be like <laughs> our worst showing in terms of <laughs> overall rankings. It's We're fun. not doing good. But here's the thing, there are so many family games out there. Like because yeah. yeah, we could we could have easily made two other lists off of the family games that just the three oh, yeah. of us like. You know? Oh my god, yeah. yeah. We could have had a top fifty for yeah, so each like, of us. <laughs> It'd I mean, be different. <laughs> Choose whatever you want. But Fireball Island is a great game. Fireball Island is, again, it's made for families. This is based off of the, we're talking about the new one by Restoration Games. Yeah. Based off the old Fireball Island where you are running around an island trying to collect treasure. And it's this big, giant, monstrosity 3D island that has all these different shoots. And there's fireballs everywhere. And you're playing cards that allow you to move. But then your cards a lot of times will allow you to do different things like throw fireballs at each other. So there's fireballs perched around the board. And then you just flick them at each other at at the character, not each other's faces. Well, you know, depending on the, which, which game you're playing, which expansion. Um, and you're essentially trying to knock over the person. If you knock them over, you get to steal one of their treasure. And then there's other times where you can play like Cataclysms where there's Volcar in the center who has a big hole in his head and you take marbles and you throw them down Volcar and he has three different shoots that the marbles can come out of. And then they run down all these different things and it's just shaking the whole board and everyone's falling over. Yeah. And it's just wild, wacky fun. And there's a game there too. There's strategy yeah. and stuff like that. But it's like, cards instead of it is a now. simple, fun game that yeah. you can pull out with kids go bonkers over this that's, game. That's why like, one of the reasons like we picked it is like I played this with kids uh, a bunch that like there's times where we set it up and they just play with the island. Yeah. Like, they don't care about Which the game fair. necessarily. But then if they ever do play the game, we play it. Then like that's really cool. And I played this with with grownups oh. and stuff who maybe grew up with Fireball Island when they were a kid or whatever. And, and it's so fun to see adults like get straight to kid Children, level yeah. with like talking smack and whatnot and trying to get like really cool. But then like because it's all... It's, you're trying to flick marbles. It's not like you don't you're not you don't have a good skill yeah, at you're it. You're not trying to like so put English on it. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it's just like it's really silly. Yeah, uh, which I was like, this is perfect for family, except for you know, kids probably eating them marbles though. Kids, but, you know, kids can be a little rough on fine. it, but it's uh, it's so good. It's, again, it's perfect for families. It's just perfect. Yeah. Uh, Steph, have you played Fireball Island? Nope. It looks awesome though. Yeah. <laughs> It's, we, we, I, think, we, I think the three of us would probably have a real good time playing oh, yeah. I think what we do <laughs> well, yeah. is we get we your like awesome copy of Riff Raff and we yes. combine it somehow where you can launch fireballs <laughs> onto the ship and get it rocking. I don't know, the squids come off on we the We can island. make it work. We can figure it out. It's an <laughs> we'll island. There's out. water around it. We can make it work. Yeah. A new game that. coming, 2021. <laughs> yeah. Fireball Island is, it's really, it's so good. It's so fun. The game is great. And then it's just wild. It's one of those things where like, we tell people, we're like, Look, if you're trying to get like, re there's definitely strategy, but if you're trying to like yeah. really take this game seriously, go play something else. Like, this if game is meant for fun. Fireball Island. You've gone too far. Yeah, it's I, like, I remind people sometimes. I'm like, just remember, this is a game where you're literally flicking marbles around. <laughs> that's the core of yeah, this exactly. thing. <laughs> but no, it's, it's a great, great family game, and that's why it's our number six. It's going to get into BGG's number five. All right, your number five is ranked 59 overall, and this was previously Mike's number one game of all time. Real good game. And that is Clank. Yeah. A deck building adventure is what deck it's called. The building adventure. There's a colon in there. 
Clank is great because it's it mixes deck building. It's deck building with a board, and you're essentially delving down into this dungeon, um, or depending on which board, because there's like ten boards now. Yep. You're going into an underground ship or whatever, and you're essentially trying to grab treasure, but there's some kind of dragon or monster down there that does not like when you grab its treasure. Makes sense. And so they get very, very upset, and then they try to kill you. And essentially, as you're going, if you're having to put things called clank, which is essentially you making noise, into this bag, and then whenever the dragon attacks, you have to start pulling these cubes out of the bag. Yeah. And if your color gets pulled... The dragon hits you, and you can die, and so it's a lot of, like, push your luck in the game, and it's just, it's really good. It's really good. What do you think of Clank, Steph? Pretty great. Um, I actually like the space version but a little bit better. There's module boards, and it's it's a little more pressure, I think. Um, but I, 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 I enjoy the game. I It's definitely a solid game that i would happily play <laughs> like i yeah. really like it yeah i don't yeah. th- i don't necessarily know if my family would like that one so much but and this is in terms of family i understand game, this is a little <laughs> heavier for a family game like if they if they're like non-gamers i would not necessarily play this with them yeah i guess I there's enough see, going on where it could probably be tough i agree i i guess i could see based on like the thieving stuff how like they would say it's a family games so you're sort of like on an adventure and stuff but i i agree well, if they them, have some familiar um, mechanics i think they'd be fine yeah. it's just like if they're like brand spanking new i yeah. wouldn't necessarily pull out clay but i still think it falls under family weight it's just on the upper yeah. end of family yeah. weight in my opinion i agree with that but yeah it's super fun uh one way or another there is a uh, clank clank in space um all these different maps clank like legacy, legacy now. now so there's yeah. all sorts of options if your family <laughs> does like clank to uh really explore which is super cool i'm glad to see it on this list even though it is kind of the higher end yeah of um of a, of a family weight um, game in terms of complexity. Yeah. So, it's a great deck builder, though. Yeah, and that's board game yeah. piece number five, I think. Five. Oh, man. Nicely done. Let's go on our number five. Our number five comes in at 1416, and that is Illusion. Oh, oh I love so this game. Good. It's a lovely card game with lots of different pictures and different colors, and what you're trying to do is put a certain color in the lineup every every time it comes to you you need to look at the top card of the deck and figure out where in the line it goes based on the proportions of the color on the card and so yeah. it's very weird and and some of them have equal amounts of color like 14 percent of this area is green and so you go around and you can either place the card in the lineup if you think you know where it goes or you can call the previous person and say they didn't get it right. And then you reveal all the cards on the back. It will tell you the percentage. And if it's in proper order, they the previous person will get the arrow card, which is a point. Or if you called them on it and you are right, you will get that point. And so you're just trying to get three points. And it's this, simple and amazing. This, <laughs> this game makes me so mad. <laughs> yes. Because... It's it is so, so deceptive, simple <laughs> so of an good. idea, like, and it's so good. And I'm like, oh, why is it? It's just it's and it's just so shapes. hard. It's so hard. I'm also real. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't played that much. I don't know if I've ever gotten a point. <laughs> it's like I'm not one. Well, because sure. like, it might be like how much green is on this card? Like where does it go? And it might be like on the card. It's just like bars, just bars of it. And so there's like a big green bar here, green bar here, and then there's like a big white bar that's surrounding most of the green bar. So that you're like, oh, it's a lot. Because in your mind, you, you go, that green that bar is green. actually this big. But that's not what's showing. It's only what's showing. Yeah. So like, it just it just messes with your brain. <laughs> and it's so hard. Yeah. Oh, it's really fun. It has no riping as fun as it is. <laughs> it's it's so simple. much fun. Yeah, oh, it it's really, so good. It really does mess with your head because you, you're... Your brain will fill in yeah, certain information. It's what it does. Like, that's yeah. not what we're talking about here. So it is a challenge, and it's incredibly simple. It's just like look at this card, and like I think this one has more green than everything to the right. It's going to go right here in this middle. It's like kind of timeline. Have you ever played timeline? Yeah, it's exactly. the same kind of putting oh, yeah. stuff in the timeline. Except you don't need to know times. anything, which is great. <laughs> no, which is sweet. It's just like off a look, you're like. I yeah, think that's more, more green. It's here, you know, it's or red or whatever. So much fun. Yeah, really, really fun. So this, game. yeah, this, wanna... this game has become a family favorite, and so I bought, I bought oh, yeah. my mom a copy, and so we're always playing it at family get-togethers, and they just love it. So yeah, I we want to get a copy. We actually haven't had a chance to find it yet, but um, we uh, oh, so, so badly. Yeah, I know. 
that Warsh. Dungeons. So good. <laughs> How many Warsh <laughs> games are on this so list? This. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Uh, anyway, that's our number five, folks. Let's go ahead and jump into Board Game Geeks number four. All righty, BGG, your number four is ranked 50 overall, and Never. that is one of Steph's favorites, and that is Seven <gasps> Wonders. I don't think she's played it. Nope, never played it. I mean, it should be higher. I mean, <laughs> 50 is plenty. I'm surprised this, this wasn't on our list in terms of you pushing for it, because I know how much you well, love so, this game. So here's the thing. I was going, I had a list of my top five favorite family games based on the actual ranking of my favorite games and if it's titled family or not. But then I'm like, it doesn't really work because my family would not play Seven Wonders with me if I asked them to. So I went with a totally different ranking system for these games that we picked today. And while Seven Wonders is still in my top five favorite games, like I love, love, love this game. It wouldn't quite make my family. Yeah, because that's kind of how we built our list was like, what do we actually pull out with our families yeah. or with, you know, newer people the most often, you know? And that's why we, like earlier, we picked Herbaceous because we're like, we've been pulling this out a ton yeah. with the family. So we're like, that has to be on our list. Even if yeah. it's like, technically this game is ranked higher, you know, it's like, nah, it's there's time and place for everything. And so, you know seven wonders and this is nothing against it like it's ranked 50 overall it is on this because it is a family game there are certain families that would love to play seven wonders um i think like your family staff our family like they would not no, they would not um but that doesn't that's not really speaking about the game itself and the game is fantastic it's a drafting game you kind of build a tableau in front of you it is steph's uh, jam you know, steph be love totally love it. love it's, love it i mean i love drafting games but this is just like the best of the yeah. best because there's just so many, and with the expansions, it just adds so much. But I'm perfectly fine just playing just the base game, which I do often. Yeah. And it's now implemented on BoardGameArena.com, yep. so I've been playing that a whole bunch on yeah. there. It's <laughs> just get my fix. Exactly right. You can play it so fast online; it's like a seven-minute game, and it's just like boom. We're it's done. real good. <laughs> like, I have oh. the app, and I have the problem of I play it so fast that I don't really think about what I'm doing, and I play horrible. But I'm just like, whoa, cool! Yeah, I want that card. No, I want this card. I want this card, and I'm like, what am I even doing? <laughs> I just get lost, but it's uh, so I fun. don't know. I, I can't get enough of seven yeah, wonders. No. So I think you're I think you're right. It's real solid. Like, you know, if I if I had the app, I'd probably just be playing it on the app. It's real time. good. But yeah, it's cool. Like something board game get, arena get that acts app. pretty similarly. Like it, it takes care of a lot of, of the stuff for yeah, you, which is like super stuff, sweet. Which is cool. Um but it's number four overall from Board Game Geek. Uh, there are a lot of families out there that I imagine do play Seven oh, yeah. Wonders because you can play it quickly. Uh it's kind of cool to build up that tableau uh in front of you to kind of get that resource production stuff. It's a cool little yeah. drafting engine builder e game. So that's number go. four on Board Game Geek. Let's go ahead and get into Love our it. number four. Our number four is 422 overall, and that is Potion Explosion. Oh, take those potions, explode them. Explode a little bit, and then you're good. <laughs> and then you're fine. I mean, this game is beautiful. I You can't help but love the colors and the marbles and everything about it. Yes. And this game has a great gateway into like new gamers or family gamers because it's like, it's got a good segue. You're like, hey, you ever play Candy Crush? This is kind of like the board game version of that. That's how we always explain it. It doesn't, it's not quite in the actual no. way but it's like there's marble things shift down and stuff there's a hook into like something familiar yeah which i think is always useful if you can like say it's sort of like this and like oh and then they start playing in the way you can build these little combos so in it you have this little uh like rack of marbles it's like a, it's like a ramp yeah uh, with, and and you're pulling out colors and if you ever pull out a color and it causes two of the same color to now collide there's an explosion. You get, you get to pick up all those marbles, which then might make another combo with an explosion. You get to pick up all those marbles. So like, real if nothing else, it's incredibly satisfying to be able to just, I'll just do that every time. Even if I don't need the colors oh, yeah. I'm getting, I'm oh, like, yeah. I just want to get like 15 marbles in my hand. Yeah. I can only keep three at the end of the, my turn, but I just want to make a cool combo. Yeah. It's so fun. And you get these, you're basically making potions. So you'll have a couple potions in front of you that'll have basically a recipe. This one needs three uh, blue marbles, a black marble, and two reds. And once you get all those onto your potion, you get to flip it over, which will give you victory points at the end. And you will also have the ability to drink that potion and get a one-off power, which you might be able to grab an extra marble. Or you can drink one where if there's a bunch of the same color marble in a row, you can collect all of those marbles so long as they're connected in one, uh, one kind of big long column. So there's all these little powers you can use. 
And then it's just sort of a, a bit of set collection where if you get multiples of the same one, you can grab like a little bonus. Or if you get uh, five different ones, you can grab a bonus. Um, yeah. It's it's just fun and like it's great. People just like love making the marbles go click clack. It's awesome. Click clack marbles. That's all. Potion explosion. It's great. <laughs> okay. Everyone else, else likes it. I love it. What else is there to say? It's great. It's potion explosion. That's it. Done. Done. Finito. I don't know what number I'm, so I'm stalling. Is that number four? <laughs> number three. Oh, hey. <laughs> That was our number three. That was our number four. So we're leaving this in. This is how the sausage is made, fam. All right, back over to Board Game Geek. Your number three is ranked 49 overall. Last time was 50, now 49, and that is Everdell. Everdell. Everdell was this highly ranked. Yeah. Zoomed up there. Oh my goodness. It really did. This, I think, kind of like Clank, where this is kind of on the upper echelon of family weight. But I do think it's. But them animals, though. I mean, it's helps. very accessible. It really is. I think it's very accessible. Yeah. I think it's a great kind of intro to worker placement because the worker placement is kind of secondary to the tableau building. Like the tableau yeah. building, you're putting out critters and uh, you're putting out critters in buildings and then critters also go with buildings and stuff. And you're essentially, and they give you different powers, give you different resources, and you're essentially trying to build out your city. And then, but then there's a couple different worker placement spots, and that's usually how you get resources to put those cars into place. So you go over right. here, you get wood. You go over get here, you get stone. stone. And so it's to me, it's very easy to teach worker placement to someone who doesn't know it because it's so straightforward. We are like, hey, you have this card. It takes one resin, two stone, and a wood. Well, these are all the spots where you can get those things. So it's very intuitive. The worker placement part is like, yeah. oh, I need berries. I need wood. Let me go here. Let I me go berries. here to get berries. Go it's not like... Oh, you're going here so that you can like do this later. And it's like, it's so many worker placement games tend to be hard to get into. I think Everdell is a really good intro to worker placement. And yeah. it's just, it's just pretty. It's fun. It's got a big tree that totally serves a purpose, obviously. Um, serves a purpose of looking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> of looking awesome. And now there's a whole bunch of expansions. I haven't even tried the two new ones that came out. No. So there's just so much content. So you're never going to get bored with this. And um, it's just, it's definitely one of the most beautiful games on yes. my shelf. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. It's uh, from the cover and then everything within, it's just super everything, pretty, yeah. which is a, a big factor. Like, it's awesome. The critters are, so, are super cute. The world is awesome. It's just very kind of like lush and kind of everything glows. I mean, it's just, it like looks, every time we played it, you know, if we've gone to a game store or something, had the tree out, people stop and be like, what? is that like what's going on here you know it's, it's a cool. showstopper it it's is. cool so i can see how families would get into this even if it is on that upper end in terms yeah, of yeah but it's still family for sure but yeah. yeah uh that's everdell folks that's number three from board game geek let's go ahead and get into our number three our number three is 2884 and that is america 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 <laughs> I won't say the rest of that. Darn yeah! <laughs> um, and so this is a definitely a, a more party type game. If you've played um, Terra, um, there's a, it's, it's kind of re-implemented from that. Or Fauna, if you've, it's kind of also re-implemented from that, where there's a card and it will have three different categories. And on the board, you will be selecting where you think the different categories fall. So there are generally in America, there's like a year, there's a state, um, and there's like, I think numbers or something. So, and so it'll be like, what year was, you know, the United States founded? And then you have to pick the year and then, or what state does the most, um, oranges come from or something like that so different things and then you have to all kind of guess and put your cubes on the board and you'll get points depending on how close you are or how exact you are to your answers so you don't necessarily have to know the answers you but if you have a general idea you'll have a good time and uh, you'll, you'll get some points and so obviously i always fail the history stuff i always fail yeah. that <laughs> but my family is really into it. it plays up to six players so it's really great because it just it, it can bring everybody in and we always play this game and there's you always have two choices on the category. So you might do like um, roller coasters or you might do like SimCity. There's like r random stuff, mm. right? There's random categories or it might be like George Washington or it might be all these different things. So you always have two choices on which category you want to pursue for this for your turn. 
And so if you might know more about SimCity than George Washington, so you might pick SimCity. I don't know. I like that. <laughs> so, I like I like A, having an option of direction to go so you don't have to like necessarily go into something you're really right. not aware of. But I also love the kind of close is good enough. If you get close, you'll get something. It's not like you have to be yeah, a super genius who remembers every little factoid about history. It's like, no, I think it's this. You can kind of do some deduction. <laughs> And feel clever along the way. Something I, I like about Wits and Wagers as yeah, well. It's like, feel, if I don't feel. have a good beat on the answer, but I know this person loves this this topic, well, I'm going to go with what they vote on, whatever yeah. their answer is. Exactly. Well, that's kind of like the thing. Like, if, if I know my grandfather knows the answer, well, I'm going to put my cube next yeah, exactly. to his cube because it's I know he knows. That. <laughs> it's, it's a great so way to good. work with it. Because, like, if you're playing just straight Trivial Pursuit or something and you don't have that knowledge... Uh, you just can be a bummer. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. It's a bummer. I feel stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, cool, cool. This yeah. one is like, no, it's more fun. You can kind of, you know, certain things are like, who would know that anyway? And and I love that the, the variety of categories is super cool. Like yeah. That, yeah. Oh my God, the variety is insane. It's it's simply awesome. And um, there's also these spots on the board. Like, I don't think anybody got it correct and you can get points that way. So if you really think nobody knows, <laughs> that's that. cool. You can just go, just go there. Just some shade. And I so, yeah, the... the yeah, no, it's definitely a fantastic game, and it, it really just brings everybody together. And so I definitely, this is one that we always play and always have a great time playing. I love it. That's why it's good enough for our number yeah. three, folks. Boom. Let's get into Board Game Geeks number two. Boom. All right, your number two is ranked number 43 overall, and this game came on and blew the lid off, and that is Boy. Azul, the original OG Azul. Man, I remember when this popped out at Essen, and, and uh, they brought like 2,000 copies of it, right. and they sold all of them. And yeah, just like, exactly. man, Whoa. did they have some confidence in this game, and it paid off. Azul, talk about games, I mean, to the point where Mike doesn't even like Azul that much anymore because you just overplayed it. I played it so many times. Because <laughs> it's a great... I've been there. I've done that with many right? games. It's <laughs> like, you're just it's like... great. I've played it a lot. Because <laughs> it's such a good family game. Yeah. It's an abstract game. It's very pretty. It's a game where you're putting out tiles on your little board, just trying to get the, the best tiles you can. There's like a, a kind of a drafting mechanism and you're just constantly hoping people don't take the tiles you need. And there's, it's very tactical. And it's like... It just sings with that family weight style, and it's it's it just works. Azul just works. People love it. It's fantastic. New people love it. It just it's a great game if you want to get people into gaming because it just goes down smooth. It just yeah. does. Yeah, it's. I mean, I just love the the whole way that you have to kind of build up a row of tiles to bring one over to your kind of final scoring board. Um, and it's super cool. And then they made the thing that makes me mad. Is they just made an expansion for it that's got me excited about it. I'm like, ooh. And I thought about it. I was like, I'm going to get the expansion. I'm like, no, because you don't have Azul anymore. You got we rid don't. of it. I was like, ah, we got rid of it. We, we have the second one, the stained glass of central one. Well, that yeah. one doesn't work with the expansion. Oh, well. It does. What are you going to do? What do you think of Azul, Steph? Oh, I think it's great. Um, I, I definitely like the later Azul titles better just because Azul, I find, can be really yes. mean. So I think that's my major problem with it is that it's just it. I I feel like I've been targeted too much in that <laughs> game, <laughs> and so I always kind of get like hit with like a huge negative every round yeah. because I have to take what I have to take. But and it's like um, dump red on staff. I feel like Summer Pavilion does it a lot better, and it's much more kind. And you have like wilds, and there's just a lot more puzzly versus a lot more, um, I guess aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know they if have, that's the right word. But yeah, like, well, with new versions, yeah. they've kind of softened the edges a little bit um, and made it more, right. not like it's easier necessarily, but there's just different ways you can kind of work the puzzle. Um, I think with each one, it seems like they've done that a bit, which is cool. But I like that now that you have a variety, because maybe some people want to play that aggressive yeah, experience, totally. and you totally can by playing the original. A lot of people like that like, hyper-competitiveness. Yeah, it's it's really yeah. good. So. I'm like, I'm not someone who's like, let's give 15 blues to this person. I'm like, that's not like super fun. <laughs> it's just like, eh. Yeah. Um, but is Azul, whichever one you like, I mean, Azul has earned its place on this list uh, very high up. I mean, up until what number one will be revealed shortly. I mean, this has been the thing. I mean, yeah. it's, it's still does incredibly well to the point where this first Azul did just get an expansion, a little mini one, because like people still well, love it two other versions and for good it, reason. Yeah. Like it's a yeah. solid game. So that's number two on Board Game Geek's number list. Let's go ahead and get into our number two. Our 
number two comes in at 945, and it's a relatively new title called Draftosaurus. Yeah. Drafting little dinos. Yeah. Drafting little dinos. dinos. <laughs> yeah, this is Any particularly Mike. Uh, we both love this game, but you, this is like Mike's like, oh, we're going somewhere with people who might want to play games. We're bringing Draftosaurus. Draftosaurus. Absolutely. 100% my go to uh game to play with people that maybe aren't gonna be gamers people that are gamers I, i'm down this is my favorite i think filler game at this point because uh i bring this with me just about everywhere and i can teach and we can play it in 10 minutes and then we can now that they're up to speed on the drafting you can flip over and do the harder harder side of the board yeah and you can play both games in 20 minutes with a teach and you're out and it's great and you have so much fun and it's just simple because you're just drafting little wooden dinosaurs which are adorable it's so cute and you're putting them into different um parts of your zoo and kind of like herbaceous where um certain areas want certain things draft is similar there's a certain uh uh pen where um, you want to have all different types of dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. You can't have the same type. And there's another one where you only want the same type. So it's like easy to explain the two but differences you want there. Couples. Here you want pairs. You know, it's just set collection, which is super duper uh, fun. And then the little meeples and the way it drafts around is just fantastic. Like yeah. Draftosaurus is amazing. Yeah. And Steph, you love amazing. drafting. Have you played Draftosaurus? Oh my god, yes! I, I when I played it only once, but I was immediately taken to it. So now it's on my shelf. I just haven't. I, I don't get it to mm-hmm. play it as much as you. So I need to play it more. I mean, I love those little rainbow dinos. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's the thing I like is it's just the speed at which you can play. And the cool thing is you can draft. You know, your dinosaurs. It's very simple, and they add this little die that you have to roll that will dictate some Where, some yeah. a bit it will limit you in a little bit. So sometimes it can only be on the left half of the board, the three pens on the left. Sometimes it can only be on the right. Sometimes it can only be on the three on the bottom or the top. But if you're the person who rolls the die, you don't have to follow you the rules. You gotta worry about it, baby. So you can put it wherever. And like that little element nice. of restriction like gives it just enough of a game that you're like, oh, I really want to put the pink up there. I can't do yeah. it. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll put them down have here. Have you played two player? You can. So you can play two player. And what you'll do is you'll draft... Um, you do basically four rounds instead of two, and you'll draft two dinosaurs at a time. So there's a, okay. a slightly different way that it works, but it, it works just fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, it's great at like three, four, or five yeah. players, and you can yeah. use all the dinosaurs. Um, but it scales well because you just take out – if you're playing four instead of five, you take out one of each color or yeah, two. Yeah. So it's it's pretty um, – It scales fine. It scales yeah. fine and stuff. But yeah, it's fun because like good drafting games – more players does not slow down the game really yeah, because really. everyone's sort of shifting and then doing stuff simultaneously. Yeah, so it's exactly. not a, a huge add of time. It's always going to be a very quick game. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I love it. That's why I pushed for it. It's a family game because little wooden dinosaurs. They're so, so cute. <laughs> They're so cute. They're so good. That's why it's our number two. Let's go ahead and go in board game geeks. The number, number one. The number one geek. Number one for you, Board Game Geek, is ranked 21 overall. This game has shot, shot, shot it up has those made quick work of Board Game Geek, I tell you. And that is Wingspan. Now, I almost dropped the mic here. I t- totally agree with this one because I recently introduced this to someone who is not That's a true. gamer. Yep. And uh, how'd it go? It's so good. She wants to play it so often. It's like, it's, it's so great. <laughs> but it's just one of those things where it's like, it, it's it's great because it's wingspan has a lot of strategy to it. Did I say it was wingspan? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, did I actually mention what it was? In case Sorry. you didn't. It's wingspan. It's wingspan. <laughs> you see another Indeed. Word, it's fine. So uh, wingspan is great because it's honestly like what you're doing in the game, there's not that much to explain. There's a bunch of different kinds of cars, but you can kind of explain those as they come out. Yeah. You can do stuff, but like the actual actions, there's basically you're getting cards, you're getting food, you're getting eggs, you're playing birds. That's basically it. And so you can teach it to like family level games, but the strategy can become a lot deeper. And so my roommate has been interested in this game ever since she saw me and my other roommate, who's her husband, um, play it. And she liked it because of the theme. She was just like, oh, this is cool. It's got like really cool like birds and like really beautiful art and stuff like that. And we were like, yeah, you want to play? You know, and she was like, yeah, maybe, maybe later. And she kind of kept bringing up, she's like, hey, we should try that bird game. Maybe we should try that bird game. So we finally played it, and now it's like literally. She's like, "Leave it out. We're playing it at breakfast," yeah. and like, like, <laughs> like literally. And so now it's become this thing. And so, it's a good choice. It's just Wingspan's a great game. It's good. Like it, it has kind of become the go-to. I mean, it it sells like crazy. I mean, it's it's twenty-one overall, and it's a it very came out last new year. Game. It came yeah. like a year ago at this point. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it it just hit and it hit hard, 
And it's got that accessibility of theme, simple gameplay in terms of the amount of actions. We can build really cool combos. So Steph, what do you think about Wingspan? Oh, I think it's great. I mean, if people yeah. like your roommate are interested, I mean, I'm all for it. Like, yeah. it is definitely attractive. People want to know what's happening. Um, so I, I love that. I mean, I think it's really great. I, it's a game I would happily play. I'm not like going to pull it off my shelf and be like, let's play Wingspan. But I would be sitting down to play it with people if they asked. I, I mean, I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. 100%. It's just fantastic. Like, I love, uh, I just love the combos you can build yeah. and how it's a great way to kind of build out this tableau and this engine builder. And you get to activate all the cards you put before. And you also get better versions of the actions now because you have filled out this, mm -hmm. your woodlands, you know. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's fantastic. Like, it's one of those things that when well, it first hit, there was all this immediate hype. It did very well. You couldn't get it anywhere. Now people have it and they're playing it and love it. Uh, and then, you know, when we got to play it, I was just like, yeah, this makes sense. Yeah. Like, I, 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 can, I can see how this is going to be like one of those instant classic games. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's super cool. It's a good one. Uh, and that's number one from y'all, uh, the folks at Board Game Geek who rank your games. Uh, but we have a number one. So let's get into that right now. Our number one comes in at 75 overall, and that is Codenames. Codenames. I mean. Codenames. It's hard to beat. <laughs> I, I can't think of a better family game. Like, yeah. I, my family play it. We've been playing it over Skype during this coronavirus time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just, everybody loves this game. Yeah. And it's just, it's it's one for everybody. You can play with any number of people. Um, and this is what I think is, like, the best party and, like, best family game. I just, I don't know. I, there, there's so much thinking and you, you want to do well. You want to make that perfect connection with your words. And it's just, it's always a challenge. Yeah. And there's yeah. so much metagaming going on. You're like, well, Mike said this. And this one time we were at this river and this yeah. happened. And then you start and you're like, Mike is, and Mike's That's just why like, I, think I was just, I it was the, both of these things are blue, yeah. and so I said blue, you know, and it's just That's like, I think yeah. it's perfect for like a family because if you know each other, you can go into this other yes. level of like communication, which is super cool. So like who better to do that with than people you've known for a very long time yeah. and know very well. Um, yeah, this one, because it can accommodate any size group, big or small. So if it's at a family gathering, holidays or whatever, it's like you can easily play. It's also casual. You yeah. can just like play around and then be done or keep playing or whatever. People can pop in and out. Like it, it's just, uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's, I think it's such a great pick for kind of yeah different groups and stuff, family or whatever that means to you. Uh, just whatever kind of group of kind of light, puzzly, riddly fun. Yeah. It's just yeah. great. Yeah. It really is just great. I mean, it, Everybody's played at this point, and if you haven't, you should. Yeah, because check it out. <laughs> you should. Just check it out. Uh, yeah, and that's why it's our number one, folks. Uh, and with that, number one. we have completed our list what? of family games. And with that, I want to just point out the Ticket to Ride wasn't on here, which surprised Isn't me. Wild? Right. And I'm sporting my park shirt because I think that's also a great family game. Another, another <laughs> one maybe to rise the ranks. Yeah, Ticket to Ride isn't here, Carcassonne, but like in yeah, terms of family weight, we could we could literally come right back and do go another. Go down all my shelves and just find, oh, that's good, that's yeah, good, that's good. I mean, curiosity. like all of my games, I mean, so so many of my games could easily fit and be a great family game. Yeah. So. All right, so just to let you know, Ticket to Ride Europe is number 11 on BGG. Just BGG. outside the list. <laughs> just outside oh the list is number 11 on BGG. So close. So yeah, there's there's so a lot more games sense. that are that are. Yeah. Um, actually, if we did an 11 through 20, we would have to talk about Ticket to Ride three times on BGG's list. <laughs> so, so clearly, any Ticket to Ride is a great <laughs> They're all great. <laughs> Nordic Country's the best. The only. But they're all great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that concludes our <laughs> list, folks. Uh, Ticket to Ride or no, uh, whether or not it was on the list. Great games. Um, there are so many more great games. Put your favorite family games... Um, Whatever that means to you in the comments yeah. below, like let us know what games we missed, which ones you enjoy and you think we should check out. We're always looking for suggestions. Steph gives us a ton of suggestions. We get lots of ones from you for yes. uh, new games to to explore. So uh, get in the comments with what you thought of, of our list, what your list would be. Uh, and make sure you give this video a thumbs up while you're there. Indeed. Doing make that. sure to let us know what lists you want to see in the future. We like to pull lists from the comments if we can. So if you want to see different publishers, different designers, different mechanics, different themes, different stuff like that, please put it down in the comments below so we can pull from that because we want to make whatever you all want to see. 
Yeah. Uh, and then I guess that's going to be it, folks. Thank you so much for checking out another 10 versus 10 from us, the three amigos. I think both of these lists were really solid. Yeah. Um, Real good lists. And just generally family weight games, uh, whether that's something lighter or heavier. No else. crossover. No, yeah, you're right. No crossover. no crossover. 20 perfect games, keeping it sexy in particular. <laughs> I know. You better keep it sexy. God, it's good. It sexy, dude. <laughs> uh, anyway, folks, we're going to get out of your hair. Uh, thank you so much uh, and get in those comments. And until next time, I have been Mike. I'm Nick. And I'm Steph. We out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye. The three amigos out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>